that, uh, as he speaks this morning, that we might hear you speaking through him, that our hearts might be prepared to receive that message, that as we receive that message we might understand it. And Lord, we pray that as we understand it, we put it into practice, that your name might be honoured and glorified, that we might be able to serve you better in the days that lie ahead. And Heavenly Father, we bring our prayers before you this morning, praying that you would cleanse our hearts and our hands, that we might be able to worship you in the very beauty of holiness. For your name's sake, we ask it. Amen. Good morning, everyone. We will begin uh, the main part of this morning's service with hymn number 242, Hosanna in the Highest. <coughs> Continue now with the children's prayer. So if we can do prayer drill, you ready? One, two, three. Dear Lord, we're sorry when we don't remember you, that you are there for us. Help us to remember you in our sad times as well as when we are happy. Prayer drill, you ready? Two, three. You forget. We want to pray for the people who are looking for work or are having a difficult time at the moment. Help us to remember to pray to you and ask for your help when we are struggling. Lord, during this Holy Week, we want to remember all the terrible things you went through to die and died for us so that we might have eternal life. Help us to remember you, are our Lord and Saviour, this week and every week. Lord, in your name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Now we'll say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil, Yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Four. And we now have the notices. Good morning. We offer a warm welcome to Martin. Martin Ashby Smith, as our preacher this morning, we also welcome everyone in chapel, any visitors, 
and those watching at home on via YouTube. Our preacher next Sunday will um, next Sunday will be our Easter Sunday service, and we will be having an Easter worship praise service led by Ashley and our door steward will be Mark. Uh, the events for this week: um, rainbows and brownies meet tomorrow. Um, and then we'll take a two-week break for Easter, returning on the 15th of April. The Bible study, the Bible study that was planned for Tuesday the 26th has been cancelled, and the next one will be on Tuesday the 9th of April at 7.30. Um, Easter services, um, there will be a Monday, um, Monday, Thursday communion service uh, downstairs in the primary room which will start at 7.30pm <coughs> and that will be led by Nigel and also can we ask um, the people that will be there hopefully um, if they can help with the setting up for the um, Easter Sunday breakfast um, if there are plenty of people there it shouldn't take too long to set up um, and uh, then on the Friday, Good Friday, the service will be led, uh, will start at 10.30, led by David and Nigel. And if you're able to help the worship group, um, they will be going out to distribute leaflets for next Sunday Easter worship praise service after the Good Friday service. Easter Sunday, we'll be having communion at 8.45 in chapel, followed by breakfast at 9.15. There will also be a box available next week for anybody wishing to make a monetary gift towards the breakfast. The breakfast will be followed by the service as normal at 10.30. And just a reminder, if you haven't put your names down on the list for, uh, and you intend to come for breakfast yet, uh, please remember to do so at tea and coffee after this morning's service. The Easter Sunday evening... Uh, we will have an Easter Song of Praise in chapel starting at 6pm, led by Janice. And also, please remember, not like I did and put all the clocks forward last night, please remember that the clocks go forward one hour next Sunday. So I've now got to go home and put them all back. The following, the full programme of ESIF services can be found in the latest newsletter or on our website with all the latest information. And finally, uh, Easter flowers. If you would like to contribute to the Easter flowers that will be on display throughout the Easter weekend, there will be a box uh, next to the sewing hatch. And if you want to put a contribution in, that would be much appreciated. As usual, tea, coffee and juice will be served downstairs after this morning's service. And we hope you will join us and share in a time of fellowship after this morning's service. If you're able to help with the tea and coffee, please put your name down on the rotor on the notice board. And also, the next three months are actually on the notice board now, so if you can start to put your names down, um, everybody will be appreciated. And finally, your offerings will now be taken. <laughs>
Uh, the children's Bible this, re- this morning is taken from Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 11, and it's on page 1015. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you. And just, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and fo- found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything. But since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. May the Lord add his blessing to that reading. And now we're going to have the children's hymn, and it is Love the Lord. And you won't know it.
is an incredible talent, isn't it? <laughs> baby, <laughs> baby, come on, baby. <laughs> How does she do that? <clears throat> Great to see young people joining in dancing. There was no way I was going to join in with that. <laughs> what with my back? <laughs> Have you got one of these somewhere in front of you? The week that changed the world. Today is Palm Sunday and it's an incredible moment in the life of Jesus and in our lives today. I can't convey the excitement that there must have been as Jesus, a marked man, was approaching Jerusalem and people who had got the message or were getting the message came out and recognised him as King and Messiah and Lord and King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This is the beginning of the week that changed the world. <clears throat> um, we've had the reading, the children's reading in Luke's Gospel. I've chosen the same event but from John's perspective um, John was so close to Jesus and he sees things slightly differently from the version that we had in Luke Dr Luke who was very observant and factual and perhaps John was a little more uh, emotional and attached to it all <clears throat> so our reading is from John's Gospel, um, the next day, sorry, John 12, verse 12, and this is the same event, but through a different pair of eyes. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches This is a Burnley palm branch, <laughs> grown in our garden. How about that? Bit battered by the winds recently, but there we are. <clears throat> they took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Luke's Gospel gives us a little bit of detail about Jesus sending two disciples out to find a donkey. Um, in John's version, it's just, Jesus found a donkey and sat upon it, as it is written. Do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified, did they realise that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him? Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. I'm just going to stop there and we'll read a little bit further later on. <clears throat> um, going to sing a hymn um, 790 if you're following in the book should be on the screen and this is what the people were recognising and saying you are the king of glory
This is, <coughs> this is where Sue gets nervous because I've got that many bits of paper. <coughs> One of the most convincing proofs that the Bible is truly the word of God lies in the number of prophecies that were fulfilled during Christ's life. Daniel prophesied the coming of the one and only Jewish Messiah prior to the temple's demise. The Old Testament prophets declared that he would be born in Bethlehem. That's Micah 5.2. To a virgin, Isaiah 7.14. He would be betrayed for just 30 pieces of silver, Zechariah 11. He would die by crucifixion, Psalm 22, and be buried in a rich man's tomb, Isaiah 53, 9. Jesus himself predicted that he would be crucified and rise bodily from the dead three days later. The Jews then responded to him, well, what sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. And they replied, but it's taken 46 years to build this temple and you're going to raise it in three days? The temple that Jesus was speaking of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he'd said and then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. <clears throat> I've sort of given us a headline for my talk today <clears throat> and it's speak things out speak things out simply and clearly sometimes when we're asked to speak on behalf of God we fumble or put in too many words and don't speak simply and clearly expressing our faith and how much God loves the person that we're speaking to. Here's an example of what happens if we add too many words. See if you can guess what this means. I was going down a declivity at a remarkable velocity when the front wheel came in contact with an unknown object I was precipitated over the handlebars onto the macadamised highway. He fell off his bike. <laughs> <clears throat> Sometimes we can be guilty of saying too much or using the wrong or inappropriate words for the person that we're speaking to. Keep it simple. Make it clear. <clears throat> Jesus was a marked man. Let's look at the context of Palm Sunday. It wasn't too many days before today, Palm Sunday, that Jesus had raised Lazarus. It's there in John 11. <clears throat> I won't read it all, but Jesus was deeply moved when he came to Lazarus' tomb. And he said, take away the stone. Martha said, but Lord... He's a dead man. He's been there for three or four days. There's going to be a stink. And Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Glory of God is what we're looking at. So they took away the stone and Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe. When he'd said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! Sorry, did I take a needle over the top? <laughs> he had to do that. He was calling a man from death back to life. He was also displaying it in front of the people. He spoke simply and clearly the message you couldn't question. Lazarus, come out, and Lazarus did. And he said, take away uh, the grave clothes and let him go. So many of the Jews who'd come to visit Mary, who was there at this event, 
They saw what Jesus did and they put their faith in him. But some of them didn't speak loudly and clearly the truth. They went off with a different agenda and sneaked on Jesus to the Pharisees. Like I said, Jesus today was a marked man. I know that many people came out waving the palm branches, recognizing who he was, but also Jesus was a marked man. The Pharisees, troubled by all this following that Jesus had got, uh, listened to a man named Caiaphas, who was a, a prophet, and maybe they were hoping that the prophet would say something different from what they suspected, but he said no. This man Jesus is coming. He's going to restore all the Jews following that Jesus had got. Uh, listen to a man named Caiaphas who was a, a prophet. And maybe they were hoping that the prophet would say something different from what they suspected. But he said no. This man Jesus is coming. He's going to restore all the Jews following that Jesus had got. Uh, listen to a man named Caiaphas who was a, a prophet. And maybe the they were hoping that of Mary and Martha. Six days before the Passover, this was Friday, just gone. <clears throat> Mary did something that was very special. She took the most pre precious possession she had, a jar of expensive perfume. She sat at Jesus' feet and poured this perfume on him, anointed him. Martha was busy doing what she was doing around the house. Judas Iscariot was there and he said why are you doing that this could have been sold for money and it could have been used for the common good what he meant was if the money came into the pot he'd have some of it you've got three people with Jesus a couple of days before today totally in character Mary at Jesus feet Martha doing the stuff round the house, listening, and then Judas plotting and planning. Three people in character. Jesus knew what was coming up and he was aware of people's reactions to him. Some would be busy, some would be listening and worshipping and anointing him, and others would be plotting. Nothing changes, does it? Some people listen, some people plot against, and some people um, are just too busy. Every person that we speak to, we must speak clearly. Okay. So then we come to <coughs> the triumphal entry. This is five days before the Passover feast, and it's a party. Um, the great crowds are gathering. They would do anyway, but there's an extra dimension to the crowd today. It's the people who'd witnessed Lazarus being lifted up, up to life from death. That miracle was speaking to many people. <clears throat> the Pharisees were plotting to kill Jesus. The Jews were coming for their Passover um, and the crowds who'd seen Lazarus called out from death to life, uh, they were there as well. Yesterday, the Sabbath, it's not recorded in the Gospels at all. I presume it was an ordinary Sabbath. There was no event worth putting into the scriptures. I presume Jesus had just spent it with his friends, a normal Sabbath day. But now it was a big day. <clears throat> If you have a birthday party, if you have a wedding anniversary, if you have any kind of cause for a celebration and you invite people to your house, they come together, usually they're there to celebrate you, your occasion and to look back, don't they? Usually. And if it's a birthday party, they say, have you had a great year? Well done, here's another year. We'll sing happy birthday to you. But it's all about where you're up to and what's happened in your past. This celebration, Jesus has got so much on his mind thinking of what's ahead. It's not for him a celebration so much of all that has passed. That's what the people are thinking. Jesus' mind is probably 
thinking this week, Holy Week, the week that changed the world, is going to be hard. But nevertheless, he does turn up at the party. They were worried that he wouldn't, but he does come along <coughs> and he joins in the celebrations. He's made a preparation. Um, the donkey's there. And to fulfill all these predictions from old, he rides in on a donkey that had never been ridden before. Um, not, as was pointed out earlier, a warrior horse, but a symbol of peace. <coughs> Palm branches were waved. Okay, so here's the Burnley palm branch. These <coughs> mean something. In Revelation 9, John had a vision of a multitude in heaven, a great multitude, every tribe, every nation, every known language in the world were gathered there um, to praise Jesus. And it says... Um, that they all had palm branches. Palm branches are a symbol from a vision and they're a practical thing and they can be seen from a distance. It's all right you saying, well done Jesus, we're having a party. These are noticeable. Speak clearly. <coughs> and they sang in a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne. Blessed is the King of Israel. We've sung that. Blessed he is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Now, Hosanna is a Hebrew word, and it means, does anyone know? Save. This is the Saviour. Hosanna means save. The two disciples who'd gone down to get the donkey... <coughs> Excuse me. All they had to do was say something clearly if they were challenged. Unusual thing to have to say. Um, we're taking this donkey, and if you object, it'll be all right. The Lord needs it. Isn't it amazing that the people who owned the donkey never came back to them? They just went, okay, if the Lord needs it, what Jesus needs, and he's spoken it out, that's fine with us. And then we read on um, that the disciples didn't understand all, all that was going on. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realise that these things had been written about him and they'd done these things. Glorified. What does glorified mean? Does it mean waving a palm branch and saying, well done, happy birthday, happy wedding anniversary, whatever? <clears throat> Jesus' glory, God's glory, is being predicted. It was predicted in Isaiah. Let me just read a little bit about that. <clears throat> Isaiah talked about God's glory. And um, the prediction about Jesus was that he would uh, come to glory. And he would bring glory to God. And that's another link that Jesus and the Father are one. Isaiah said, the Father will be glorified, and here we have Jesus being glorified. And it starts to build this picture of Jesus' connectivity to the Father. <clears throat> Isaiah spoke primarily of the glory of God John spoke only of the glory of Jesus and made no distinction between the two. The thought of glory is complex. If I asked you to write down what does glory mean, we might have a lot of different answers. It is complex. There is the idea of majesty, and there is also the idea that Jesus' death and his subsequent resurrection and his exaltation, they would be the real glory. Isaiah saw ahead and saw glory and <clears throat> glory is about to come in six days time five days time Friday Jesus on the cross and then in seven days time Jesus not on the cross that's the glory and Jesus of course went to the cross for us 
when he was praying um, in the next few days we see Jesus' prayer life really come to life as it were he's always closely connected with his father usually taking time out to be with his father but his prayers now bring tears the intensity of what is ahead of him is reflected in his prayers and he Connected prays for three usually of taking time out to be with his father firstly for himself. his prayers now in John 17 it says the Jesus intensity of what is ahead of him heaven and pray is reflected in father his the time has come glorify and your son he that your son may Praise for three usually of taking time out to be with his father. Firstly, for and himself. His prayers now in John 17, tears. it says, the Jesus, of what is look ahead towards of him heaven earth and pray. As the the father, the prayers. time has come. Glorify and your son, he that your son may praise for three usually of taking time out to be with his father. And he wasn't Firstly, just for praying himself. for the disciples there, he was praying for us. He did pray for the disciples. I'm not praying for the world, but I'm praying for those that you gave me. They are yours. All I have is yours. All you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them, through his followers. Glory comes to Jesus through us here today. You might be thinking, Martin, is this right? It's there written. Through us, his followers, that we can bring him glory. And that's reflected in his other bit of prayer. Um, he prays, prays for all believers, um, which is definitely us. Um, I have given them the glory that you gave me, <coughs> that they may be one as we are one. Father, I want those who you've given to be with me where I am to see my glory. I think that's cause for a celebration that we can bring glory to God. <clears throat> then there was the Lazarus effect. It was only a few days ago that Lazarus had come out alive and the people there were adding to the normal crowds who would have been there to celebrate the Passover feast. Why were so many people impressed? Because it was a miracle that nobody else could do. Only God can bring people back to life. And so they were telling everyone, let's go to the Passover. Jesus might be there. He's the one who's done this. The problem is that they were there because of a miracle. And scripture sometimes has things to say about that. Um, should we have faith in the miracle or should we have faith in the one who performs it? If you look at the uh, definition of faith in Hebrews, it says, um, true faith is unseen. It's about what is yet to happen. The miracle had happened. Yeah, Faith is being sure of what we hope for, certain of what we do not see. We have a faith that's a gift from God. Exercise it in what has yet to come. Pray earnestly like Jesus did for the future. What's happened, miracle or otherwise, we can't do anything about. Have faith. Faith is for your future. As we read on in this one day when a lot was going on, more people added. Another group, Greeks. And they'd come to worship at the feast. And they came and they said... Sir, we'd like to see Jesus. That was to Philip. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew, in turn, told Jesus. And Jesus said to that group of people, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. And then he explains that things won't grow unless they fall to the ground like a seed and then are watered and grow again. So something has to die before it comes back to life. And they're thinking... Really? What's all this about? My heart is troubled, said Jesus. What shall I say? Father, save them from this hour. No, for this very reason I've come to this point. Father, glorify your name. And then, amazingly, for this group of people, there was a huge clap of thunder and a voice came from heaven. We don't often read this in the text around Palm Sunday. 
But that voice from heaven says, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd that was there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said an angel had spoken to them. Back to my theme, speak clearly. And speak appropriately to the person you're with. Then it was the end of the day. Jesus, in Jerusalem still, went into the temple. It was late, so he went back to Bethany. <coughs> What do we have as a conclusion? Amazingly, so short a time before Jesus prayed in Gethsemane and all the darkness that followed, the word that is most on Jesus' lips in his prayer life is glory. Glory and glorify are there nine times in this short passage. This glory is the eternal glory of the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And expressed, expressed um, definitely in Jesus' life, death, resurrection and ascension and eternal reign. Next Sunday you'll be celebrating the fact that Jesus has risen. That, along with the fact that he gave up his life for us, is the glory that he's referring to. It's a glorious source of joy. <clears throat> Speak out simply and clearly. I've got a test for you. Quaking in your boots, I know. I'm going to try and explain a scripture using lots of long words. And you've got to guess what the scripture is. <coughs> it's well known. Have complete confidence in the one perfect deity who has sovereign control encompassing the entirety of one's cardiovascular recirculating pump. Do it again. It's in Proverbs. It's Proverbs. No. <laughs> no, but very close. Very similar. <clears throat> Does anyone know what Proverbs 3, 5, 6 says? Begins with trust. Well done, Sue. Sue had not been looking at my notes. Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. <coughs> Simple, clear. <coughs> but if I say, have complete confidence in the perfect deity who has sovereign control, encompassing the entirety of one's cardiovascular recirculating pump, that's not as good as trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. When Jesus spoke you can put his uh, writings and what he said in, in two clear camps parables which weren't clear at first because there was always another level for you to go and look at and find a, a de deeper meaning or something like Lazarus come out was really clear <clears throat> When Jesus was on the cross, um, he spoke in a loud voice, and it was clear. A friend of ours has been reading a book about the method of um, crucifixion, how cruel it was, and the stages that somebody who was being crucified went through in their agony before it led to the desired death. And most people who were being crucified died of asphyxiation because they could no longer hold themselves up to gain breath, to get air in their ribcage, and they had slumped and could not breathe. And if you can't breathe, you can't speak, the most you can do is utter a little groan. Jesus at the end of his crucifixion, as he was about to give up his spirit, do you know what he did? He spoke, and how did he speak? In a loud voice, 
It is finished. Lazarus come out. It is finished. And this is amazing <clears throat> that Jesus was able to do this because everyone else who was crucified silently groaned their last breath. But not with Jesus. He spoke clearly. It is finished. And he gave up his spirit. The people at the party today, most of them weren't there on Good Friday when Jesus finished his life. Most of them, apart from John the disciple that Jesus loved and the women, um, weren't near the cross. It would be great to celebrate, yes, but we're also called to stand, we're also called to still be there when Jesus is going through the hardest thing. We are called to celebrate, yes, live our lives with joy, yes, reflect his glory, yes, and keep on doing it, stand. The thing is that Jesus, the Father as well, has given us, with his Holy Spirit, some armour in which to do it. We are called to stand, and we have the equipment to do it with. The armour that's mentioned in Ephesians, I think it is, so that we don't have to be distant from the cross. We are called to stand and speak up for what we believe in. And speak out clearly and simply. Don't use highfalutin words and long sentences that are confusing. Speak loudly and clearly about your faith. If somebody says, are you a Christian? Don't be like Peter three times saying, no, 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 I'm not one of his followers. Say, so, yes, I have a faith. And my faith is in God. God loves me, I know that, and God loves you. It's so simple. And we do shy away from it, don't we? Speak up, speak clearly, speak, speak simply. Thank you. We're going to sing again. <clears throat> Have I missed out a hymn? Yeah. Yes. Sing it. sing it anyway. Number 199. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Please stand if you're able. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. In the city of our God, the holy place. In the joy of the Oh, he hates us against the 
celebration we want to thank you Lord Jesus for this special day help us to stay true to you and reflect your glory even when things look dark and hard and things come against us help us keep our eyes fixed on you Lord Jesus King King of Kings we thank you Lord for blessing us to be here 2,000 years on, it's still a party, it's still a celebration, and Lord, be with us as we spend the rest of this day, hopefully remembering you and giving glory to your name. Amen. Shall we finish saying the grace to each other? Is that how you close the service? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless you. Cheers. <clears throat> the final hymn is um, number 367, Jesus is Lord. I'm told you may not know it, but it's a uh, simple tune. I'm sure you'll pick it up. Oh, okay. Good stuff.
God's strong, but the curse of all weak. Come, not because of any goodness of your own that gives you the right to come. But come, because you need mercy and help. Come, because you love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. Come, because he loved you and gave himself for you. Come and meet the risen Christ, for we are his body. We read in the Bible that the Apostle in Corinthians that the Apostle Paul tells that this the institution of the Lord's Supper. For I received from the Lord what I also handed to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he given thanks he broke and said, This is my body, do this for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's pray. Loving God, we praise and thank you for your love shown to us in Jesus Christ. We thank you for his life and ministry announcing the good news of your kingdom and demonstrating its power by lifting up the downtrodden, healing the sick and loving the loveless. We thank you for his sacrificial death upon the cross for the redemption of the world and for raising him to life again as a foretaste of the glory we shall share. We give thanks for his bread, for this bread and wine, symbols of our world and signs of your transforming love. Send your Holy Spirit, we pray, that we may be renewed into a likeness of Jesus Christ and formed into his body. We pray in his name and for his sake. Amen. 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 We now take up the bread which was given for us to share. And when you take the bread, please keep it and um, take it together.
In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, This is the cup in the new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembering of me. Let's pray. Your death, O Lord, we commemorate. Your resurrection we confess. Your final coming we await. Glory be to you, O Christ. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we are still far off, you meet us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, you declared your love. You gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we also share Christ's body, life, his risen life. We who drink from his cup bring life to others, and we who in the spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us in the firm hope that you have set before us, so that we all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're now going to take up the collection which is given for charitable purposes. Lord, thank you for all the gifts that you help us to use to show your kingdom. Amen. And let's just say, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.